you like another pillow? Sir, I'm afraid you're going to have to put that bag away before takeoff. FAA regulation. It doesn't fit under the seat, and all of the overhead bins are full. I already checked. Well, maybe you didn't check all of them. What word did you not understand? I told you there's no room. I'll just hold it, all right? Is there a problem here, Maggie? No, no, just a misunderstanding. Listen, if you want this bag put away that bad, then you find a place for it. That's what you get paid for, isn't it? You're absolutely right, sir. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Uh, so, did you find a place to put my bag? I certainly did, sir. Now, may I take your coat? <laughs> Athens to Athens, dust to dust. We don't know where we're going. Doesn't matter anyway. Anywhere that we go, you may want to follow us when we go. Where the day. God, what a flight. Oh, no idea. Somebody forgot to stock the galley and coach, and I had to tell the passengers we were out of nuts. God, you'd have thought I told them we were out of gas. So what'd you do? Luckily, we hit that air pocket and dropped a thousand feet. Yeah. Suddenly, that little bag of nuts wasn't so important to him, was it? There you are, Randy. Why haven't you called me? I guess our night together meant nothing to you. What? How can you say that? You know you mean the world to me, darling. Now, trust me. I can explain. Fine. Let's hear it. You bet. Just give me a sec, right? Have a seat, and I will be right there. <laughs> Paul, her name is Sue. She works in accounting. Thank you. I thought her name was Lori. It is. I'm so bad. Hello, people. Hi, Hi Lenora. Lenora. I have your paychecks here, but first it has come to my attention that today's flight was not properly stocked. Now, if it happens again, I'm afraid I may have to be harsh and unpleasant. Well, never hurts to go with your strength. <laughs> it's so nice to see you all enjoying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing. Oh. Acting as if you have job security. <laughs> Sorry, did I bring the room down? Oh, no. We were all just noticing that... You don't cast a shadow. <laughs> Dear Paul. Dear sweet, heterosexually challenged Paul. <laughs> I so admire gay humor. It's so witty, so biting, so illegal in 37 states. <laughs> so, what are we doing for the big bash tonight? I told you guys, we do not have to do anything special for my birthday. Oh, come on. We have to celebrate the big two sticks. <laughs> Look, I'm going to make us reservations at Mambo Mambo for tonight. Who's in? Well, I guess it's just the four of us, unless Randy's bringing someone. You are scum! But you look like a Sue! You are in so much trouble. <laughs> Oh, Maggie, Jess, oh, this is so thoughtful. I love it. Happy birthday, Paul. Thanks, you guys, but I told you you didn't have to buy me any gifts. Oh, come on, no one ever says they don't want a gift ever means it. <laughs> they don't? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, hey Matt. Matt. Hey, say, Paul, in honor of your birthday, how about a drink on me? Thanks, Aww. but uh, you don't have to do anything special for my birthday. Oh, <laughs> Trust me, buy him the damn drink. <laughs> Hey, guys, I'm gonna go get us some more chips. Anybody else want anything? Uh, no. Nope. Thanks, Jack. Oh. Paul, I'm so glad you like your tie. You know, you're not the easiest person to buy for. Yes, well, that's one of the hazards of shopping for a gay man. We're very picky. <laughs> in fact, I, I, I first discovered I was gay in Cub Scouts when I realized my neckerchief clashed with my hat. <laughs> you knew you were gay when you were that young? Oh, yeah. And my folks figured out before I did. I think I was, like, seven. What happened when you were seven? See, as a gift one year, my sister got this easy-bake oven. 
turquoise plastic and had a, a light bulb inside that cooked the little cakes. It was fabulous. <laughs> Every day I'd run home from school and bake myself into a little stupor. <laughs> Until one day, my father comes home from work early. He comes into my sister's room and he sees me there wearing an apron, serving a little chocolate cake to Malibu Barbie. <laughs> he just stared at me for the longest time. And he just walked over and he uh, smashed the Easy Bake Oven to bits. I don't understand. How could the light bulb cook the little cakes? <laughs> so, how are things going with you and Luke? I'm afraid Luke's no longer with us. You broke up with him? Why? Ah, uh, irreconcilable differences. He felt he had a personality. I felt he did not. <laughs> so does this mean that you're available? Yeah. Spread the word. Well, have you ever considered going out with me? No, but let me consider it. No. Look, well, Jess, you don't need to play games with me. We've known each other for a while now, and I think it's safe to say that if we were being honest with each other, we'd both have to admit, you want me. What? Oh, and I don't blame you. I mean, uh, gosh, I'm so adorable half the time. I want me. Good. Love the one you're with. Look, I'm serious, Jess. We both know there's something here. A spark, some heat, a thing. So how about it? You're serious, aren't you? Look, I'll tell you what. Why don't you think about it, and I'll call you tomorrow. Yeah, OK. OK. Oh, but I just want to know. If I say no, we'll still be cool, right? Absolutely. Okay, good. But if I do say yeah, I just want you to know I'm not the kind of girl who does it on a first date. That's okay. I'm willing to go out with you twice. <laughs> I can't believe you dragged me all over Miami for some stupid gourmet cat food. Can I help it if Spats is finicky? Finicky, he weighs 30 pounds. Look at him. I think he goes through the fridge when we're not home. <laughs> Jess, owning a pet is a big responsibility. We had this talk when we got him. Yeah, but that was back when he was a cute little kitten. Mm -hmm. Now he's fat and he's mean. I hate him. <laughs> if you would at least try to be a little affectionate with Spats, maybe he'd be nicer to you. Go on, play with him. <laughs> um, hey, Spats. Looking good. Now you listen to me. <laughs> this apartment ain't big enough for the three of us. Now somebody's gotta go. And it's gonna either be you or the perky little white girl. <laughs> Jess, have you seen the can opener? Uh, check the junk drawer. Maggie, something strange happened tonight. Mac asked me out. That's great. You guys have been like power flirting for the last six months. When are you going out? I don't think we're gonna. I mean, I like him, but... But what? He's great. He's a total catch. He's our bro. <laughs> our what? Bro. That's street talk for brother. I know what it means. <laughs> he's sweet, he's funny, and you have to admit, he's gorgeous. Oh, Lord, yes. A moment of silence while we praise his features. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what's the problem? It just won't work, Maggie. Meg and I are friends. And if it doesn't fly, it could get really messy. Oh, I get it. You're afraid you and Mac would wind up dissing each other. Dissing? Yeah, that's street talk for... I know what it means. <laughs> and that's the last time I let you watch Def Comedy Jam. <laughs> Just all I'm saying is you deserve someone who could make you really happy. Now, listen to me. Oh, no, you don't, Maggie. You're doing it again. Now, please, this is my love life. But, Jess, I just don't want to see you dating guys like Luke for the rest of your life. Well, thanks for your concern, but I'll make my own decisions in my own time. You don't have to worry about me so much. I'm fine. In fact, everything is peachy keen. <laughs> peachy keen? Yeah, that's white talk. I know what it is. <laughs> hey, did you guys hear? We're getting a new pilot today. Captain Baldwin left Regency. Really? Why? I heard he had a nervous breakdown. I heard he had an affair with Lenora. I heard he had a nervous breakdown because he had an affair with Lenora. <laughs> 
quiet, you guys. Something wicked this way comes. Hello, people. The new pilot should be here any second. And I hope that everyone will go out of their way to make him feel welcome. Absolutely. Of course, I bet some of us will make him feel more welcome than others. <laughs> Jess, you always say the most unkind things. Sometimes I get the feeling you had a very unhappy childhood, and I think to myself, good. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rex Parker. Hello, Captain Parker. I'm Lenora Zwick, flight crew supervisor. Nice grip. <laughs> well, I hope that you and Mrs. Parker will enjoy making Miami your new home. No, there is no Mrs. Parker. I see. <laughs> well, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone? And I'll be right back. Paul. <laughs> All right. He's tall, handsome, and single. What do you think? Is he on your team or mine? It's a tough call. I, I, I need to get in closer. I'm picking up mixed signals on my gaydar. Give me a minute. So you learned to fly in the service, huh? You see any action? Action? Son, I spent the best years of my life serving my country in some of the most godforsaken corners of this planet. Crawling through muck and mire, dodging bullets and landmines, surviving for days, even weeks at a time on nothing but rainwater and insects. Running half naked through the forest with only a map and an eight inch blade, knowing at any minute I might have to gut some bloodthirsty commie. Did I see any action, son? You're looking at one of those rare individuals can look death in the face and smile. Not only is he straight, he's perfect for you. So, Captain Parker, if you'd like to rest up a little before the flight, you're welcome to use my office. Well, that'd be great. You, uh, mind if I stretch out on your couch? Well, I don't have a couch, but I'm sure we can find something for you to lay on. Hello. Hey, Mac. Well, sure, just a sec. Jess, it's Mac for you. Why is Mac calling you here? Mac wants to take her on a date. Ooh. Oh, God, I haven't decided what I want to do about this yet. Maggie, tell him I'll call him back. Sure, I'll take care of it. Hello, Mac, it's Mac. Oh, fine. Listen, Jess can't talk right now, but she wanted me to tell you that she'd love to go out with you. What? <laughs> sure. Mambo's tonight at nine? Bye. I can't believe you did that. Uh, okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but I know you see the humor in it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Find that humor. What did you just do? You know you want to go out with Mac. I'm just helping to speed the process. But I told you to stay out of this. You had no right to do that. Oh, good. Chick fight. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not I go out with Mac is my business, not yours. Jess, I was just trying to help. Well, don't, Maggie. You're always pushing me, and I really wish you'd just stop it. You know, I can handle my own love life. Look, I'll call him back. No, just leave it alone, would you? And for once, would you just stay out of my business? Fine. You want me out of your business, I'm out. You're on your own. Oh, Paul. As usual, you forgot to tell me what the teams are for today's flight. Uh, well, off the top of my head, why don't you put me and Randy in first class and Maggie and Jess together in coach? <laughs> I'm just so bad. Where the day takes you. The meals ready yet? Uh, I don't know. Let's check. What is that? It's called Fiesta Loaf. Is it steak, chicken, or fish? Yes. How are we going to serve that? What are we supposed to say to the passengers? How about, well, you should have flown first class, you cheap son of a... <laughs> are Maggie just speaking yet? No, and I really thought they'd be over this by now. Well, whatever you do, don't go choosing sides. I learned the only way to win when Maggie and Jess go at each other is to stay neutral. Mm. I actually found a few phrases that come in handy during times like this, like, 
Well, I certainly see your side of the story. Or, I'm just as surprised as you are. And if all else fails, try. Is it just me or she put on a few pounds lately? Always a classic. So, did you talk to Maggie Poppins? Uh-huh. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You're on her side, aren't you? And we're off. She can get mad at me all she wants, but the truth is, all I've ever wanted for her is to be happy. I hope she's calmed down now and is thinking rationally. I just want to kick her, little Miss Salt Lake City. Why don't you worry about her own love life? I know which men are right for me. You should see the parade of bottom feeders that come waltzing through our front door. I mean, it's like she cruises trailer park yard sales. I'm telling you, it's the living together and the working together. It's tough. Although I try harder to make it work than Maggie does. You gotta believe me. She's trying to kill my cat. I just don't need anybody telling me how to live my life right now. You know what I mean? I'm just as surprised as you are. It's like the fifth time you've said that. Why do you keep saying that? What I meant... Is it just me or she put on a few pounds lately? You're such a good friend. <laughs> I have an extra trash bag, if you'd like one. No, thank you. Listen, Jess, this whole thing has been so silly. I I'm sorry it happened. Yeah, me too. I guess I overreacted. I guess I was real pain in the neck. <laughs> right a little lower. <laughs> Look, I shouldn't have pushed you, but I just want you to be happy, and I thought you really liked Mac. I do. I like him a lot. In fact, I'm crazy about him, Meg. That's the problem. What is? I could wind up really falling for him. Hard. But that's wonderful, isn't it? Mag, I'm the same age my mom was when she married my dad. She'd always dreamed of going to Paris, but instead she got stuck raising five kids in a crappy little apartment in Philly. She never did get to Paris. Well, that's not gonna happen to me. I'm going to Paris. Jess? You're a flight attendant. You can go to Paris whenever you want. <laughs> it's a metaphor, damn it. <laughs> I'm just saying, Max not like any of the other guys I've ever dated. He could be, you know, the real thing. I think I'm just afraid of getting involved with someone. I'm only 25. I'm afraid it's going to keep me from doing what I want to do. Well, what is it you want to do? How the hell should I know? I'm only 25. Get off my back. <laughs> You know I want you to live your dreams. You know that. But I always thought the idea was to find someone to share your dreams with. Hey. Hey. Right on time. Love a woman who's prompt. So, I made uh, three different dinner reservations. Your choice. What'll it be? Cuban, Chinese, Thai, or Mexican? Mac, it's not gonna happen. Baby, work with me. I've got a limited number of coupons here. <laughs> Mac, listen to me. It's not that I haven't thought about it, because I have. A lot. But So I... you do admit that there's something between us? Well, yeah. I'm just not sure I'm ready to go there. At least, not yet. And until I'm sure, why don't we just relax and enjoy what we've got? Look, Jess, if you don't want to date me now, that's cool. I can deal with that. But, you know, I did have this great evening planned. I mean, we would have gone out for a little jazz, a walk on the beach. We could still do that. <laughs> As friends. Yeah. But I guess the only thing we couldn't do is the kiss. The kiss? If we went on a date at the end, you would get the kiss. Not a kiss, but the kiss exactly and after the kiss would i get the hickey <laughs> go on make fun but you don't know it's not like a regular kiss it's different different how well that's hard to explain now if you want i could demonstrate 
camera straight. <laughs> Do you seriously think I'd let you kiss me? <laughs> well, if the kiss does nothing for you, then it's obvious that you're right and we're only meant to be friends. But, you know, if the kiss heats you up, like I think it would. Oh, please, your ego is so out of control. <laughs> 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 okay okay go ahead I'll enjoy laughing in your face what are you doing back there this is where the kiss starts oh okay that is not so great that is very typical <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I can see how some inexperienced woman might fall for that. Well, I definitely sense some raw talent here. <laughs> Well, if we're not going to date, then, you know, why waste it? How's Friday? Pick you up at 8. Great, right, see you then. <laughs> oh, um, one last thing. How do you feel about Paris? Paris? Well, some place I've always wanted to go. Why? Just check in. Bye-bye. Wow, bye-bye. Thank you for fun. Wow. Did you see that guy? He's a major babe. Yeah, forget it, Maggie. I talked to him. He's gay. What? Oh. Are you sure? Yeah. In fact, he was asking if you were single. <laughs> really? Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Wait a minute. I talked to that passenger, too. He's married with, like, three kids. I am so bad. 